The tradition of the Brahmins, Brahmana Dhammika Sutta. Thus I have heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling in Savati, in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's Park. Then some affluent Brahmins of Kosala, old, aged, burdened with years, advanced in life, come to the last stage, approached the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with Him. When they have concluded their greetings and cordial talk, they sat down to one side and said to the Blessed One, Master Gautama, are the Brahmins presently seen observing the Brahmanical tradition of the ancient Brahmins? Brahmins. The Brahmins are not presently seen observing the Brahmanical tradition of the ancient Brahmins. Please let Master Gautama speak about the Brahmanical tradition of the ancient Brahmins, if it would not be an imposition. In that case, Brahmins, listen and attend closely. I will speak. Those affluent Brahmins replied, Yes, sir, the Blessed One said this. The rishis of the past controlled themselves and were austere. Having abandoned the five stands of sense pleasures, they practiced for their own good. The Brahmins did not own cattle, nor did they keep bullion and grain. They had study as their wealth and grain. They guarded a divine treasure. Whatever was prepared for them, such food was placed at their doors. People thought what was prepared in faith should be given to those who sought it. With clothes dyed various colors, with bedding and with dwellings, those from prosperous provinces and realms paid homage to those Brahmins. The Brahmins were inviolable, unconquerable, protected by Dhamma. No one at all obstructed them in any way at the doors of their homes. For 48 years they observed the spiritual life of virginal celibacy. The Brahmins in the past pursued the quest for knowledge and conduct. The Brahmins did not marry outside, nor did they purchase a wife. Having united through affection, they agreed to dwell together. Apart from that occasion, after her fertile season was over, the Brahmins never went to her for sexual intercourse during the interval. They praised the spiritual life of celibacy and good behavior, rectitude, mildness, austerity, gentleness, harmlessness and patience. He who was supreme among them the Brahmin, firm in his exertion, did not engage in sex, even in a dream. Training in accordance with his practice, others hear of intelligent disposition, praise the spiritual life of celibacy, as well as good behavior and patience. 
having requested rice, bedding, clothes, ghee and oil, having righteously collected them. They then performed sacrifice. But at the sacrifice that was arranged, they did not slaughter cattle. Like a mother, father, brother, or any other relatives, cows are our supreme friends. Since medicines are produced in them, they give food and strength, and so too beauty and happiness. Having recognized this benefit, they did not slaughter cattle. Delicate with large bodies, handsome and glorious, the Brahmins were keen on what was to be done and not done. According to their own traditions, as long as this continued in the world, this population happily flourished. But an inversion took place in them. Having previously slain the slight as slight, they saw the splendor of the king and lavishly adorned women. Chariots yoked with thoroughbreds, well made with colorful coverings, adobes and residences that were designed and measured in proportion. The Brahmins then coveted abundant human wealth, accompanied by herds of cattle and groups of resplendent women. Having composed hymns to that end, they then approached Okaka and said, You have abundant wealth and grain. Sacrifice, you have much treasure. Sacrifice, you have much wealth. And then, convinced by the Brahmins, the king, lord of charioteers, had these sacrifices performed. The horse sacrifice, the man sacrifice, the Sammapasa, Vachapeya, and Niragala. He then gave wealth to the Brahmins, cattle and bedding and clothes, and lavishly adorned women. Chariots yoked with thoroughbreds, well made with variegated coverings. Residences that were delightful and well designed in proportion, having filled them with various kinds of grain, he gave this wealth to the Brahmins. Having obtained wealth there, they agreed to store it up. As they fell under the control of desire, their craving increased still more. Having composed hymns for this purpose, they again approached Okaka and said, Like water and the earth, like bullion, wealth and grain, just so are cattle useful to people, for they are requisities of living beings. Sacrifice, you have much treasure. Sacrifice, you have much wealth. And then the king, lord of charioteers, convinced by the Brahmins, had many hundreds and thousands of cows slaughtered in sacrifice. They did not harm anyone in any way, not with their feet, or their horns. The cows were as mild as lambs, giving buckets of milk, but having grabbed their horns, the king slew them with a knife. Then the devas and the fathers, Indra, the asuras, 
and the rakshas cried out how unrighteous because the knife struck a cow formerly there were three illnesses desire hunger and old age but because of the slaughter of cattle there came to be 98 this unrighteousness by violence has come down as an ancient custom they kill the harmless creatures the sacrifices fall from righteousness in such a way this mean practice though ancient is censured by the wise wherever they see such a thing people censure the sacrifice when the dhamma had thus been lost suddhas and vesas were divided numerous kathiyas were divided the wife despises her husband kathiyas and brahmas kinsmen and others protected by their clan disregarding the doctrine of birth have come under the control of sensual pleasures when this was said those affluent brahmins said to the blessed one excellent master gautama excellent master gautama master gautama has made the dhamma clear in many ways as though he were turning upright what had been overthrown revealing what was hidden showing in the way to one who was lost or holding up a lamp in the darkness so those with good eyesight can see forms we now go for refuge to master gotama to the dhamma and to the sangha of bhikkhus let master gotama consider us lay followers who from today have gone for refuge for life